All right, this is our Super Bowl 53 preview. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books. You can bet at any of them on this game, along with props, totals, everything else. TunicaTravel.com is the place to go check it out. They got more info on all of them than what I could possibly give you here. So, uh, so let's jump in. Patriots minus two and a half against the Rams. Total is 56 and a half. It opened at 59 and got bet down to 56 and a half. It also opened as a pick 'em. Um, and actually, the whatever the sports book is in Costa Rica opened up as Rams minus one. Rams minus one, and that got hit quick. Yes, 17 minutes. I talked about that on the Daily Show. Quick, quick. Uh, 17 minutes. It went from Rams minus one to Pats minus two and a half. Pats plus one. I'd have been the happiest man. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. Now, the game is at 5.30 p.m. Central Time on CBS from Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. As of Tuesday night, more than 75% of the bets and money were on the Pats. It is trending to be the most popular Super Bowl bet ever tracked. They are projecting five billion dollars. Six billion. Six billion. Is it six, six billion? Six billion dollars. What was last year's money? Last year's was four. 8? No, four point six. Something. Four point six or something like that. Yeah. So um, I thought it was a little bit more than last year. So it's a billion dollars more. Oh yeah. Well, and, okay. and the biggest thing is uh, the majority of this will be legal this year. Not well, yeah, okay, not majority. Uh, it'll be almost triple the amount of legal bets. That's right. Well, how do they track the the, the other uh, stuff? Nefarious bets. Uh, I would imagine it has friends. to do with uh, with online booking and okay. whatever else. So they, it's they're just not, money they're not, that's, they're not tracking buddies down the road. Local, no, local but I, shots. I'm willing to bet that they're like guesstimating. It's like the Nielsen rating, pretty much. <laughs> like, yeah, we got Google Echoes or whatever they're called in everybody's houses. We heard Joey down the street talking about how he's putting a hundred, you know, to, okay, to Billy yeah, down there. You might you might have the people actually making the bets to it, but the people taking the bets probably don't have Google Echoes and Alexas in their house. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. You you might be right. Um, let's talk about the uh, the most popular bet. Uh, by the way, it's over seventy five percent of the money and the bets. But currently, because that's gone down, because as of Monday I was looking at it, it was eighty percent. So the on, Rams money is starting to come in. On on Sunday it was over eighty percent, almost eighty one percent. On Monday night it was seventy eight percent. Okay, so I checked it. Tuesday it was seventy five percent. So you got a lot more Rams buyers. I always thought that the Rams money was going to come in late, and if I was going to bet the Rams, I would wait until it got as close to three as it could. I don't think it's getting to three, and I think they realize that. So well, that's one of the things that uh, the Rams actions coming in. Now. Chris Andrews, who runs South Point, he moved it to Rams minus three, or uh, sorry, at uh, Patriots minus three. And when that happened, uh, within 15 minutes, he had over a hundred thousand dollars in 15 minutes. And they immediately moved it back to two, two and a half. half. Yeah, I think two and a half's the best number you're going to get if you're a Rams better. And uh, and it's so still you, scary. No, it's still scary. It's still scary. But but, but that's people the best, are still going to bet on the game. Oh, like that's right. No, 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 no. And people are still going to bet against the Patriots. I mean, that's just part of it. I mean, people bet against the Yankees. People bet against the Warriors. It's yeah. You got to spread for a reason. And the Pats haven't blown anybody out in any of these Super Bowls. No. They, this will um, be nine, and they've never won one. Other than this, the, the one that they trailed, twenty-eight to three, going into the fourth quarter, they actually won by six. They won by six. That's the biggest margin of victory they had at all. Of them. Every Pat Super Bowl has been decided by one score. They had eight. That was last year. Uh, then they had six. That was the year before. They've had four two times. There were three. Uh, nope, just two. Oh, just two. That were so, two. Uh, no, that were by four. Oh, and so four. the four was Seattle, where they won 28-24, oh, and they really lost to the Giants 21-17. to the, the first they had, three that they won with Vinatieri were all three points. Well, and, and then they lost one, I think, to the Giants the, well, yeah, by the three. One they lost. So, but they've had three of them that were divided, uh, I thought separated all by of three them points. Were, I forgot about the four point. I forgot the Seahawks one was four. Yeah, so that was 28-24. Um, most popular bet that has ever covered. Super Bowl 51, the Pats minus three, 62% of the bets were on the Pats over the Falcons. The, Ooh, the, a, lot of, a lot of bad action that night. I believe that. Um, the most popular bet that did not cover, 
Super Bowl Forty Eight. That's eighteen and zero. Nope. Oh, nope. okay. No, that one actually there was a lot of buyback on uh, on the Giants. Well, that number was huge. Mm-hmm. That number was massive. It was like fourteen. Yes, it was. It was over doubled. Uh, yeah, it was over two scores. Or yeah, it was over two scores because it tends two scores. And oh, I remember uh, I made a lot off that one. I because I, 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 <laughs> I thought there's no way they win this by that, that much. That did not. Um, no, I thought they'd win by like ten. But you know, because I I thought the Giants were hot. And what, but either way, um, no, the the most Popular bet that did not cover Super Bowl Forty Eight, Broncos minus one and a half, was at sixty eight percent over the Seahawks. Seattle. Yeah, oh, I forgot about when that the Seahawks one. beat the Just absolute blew them out. breaks off of. So we'll get into this. Never mind. I'm not going to spoil it now. We'll get into that. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you can go on and get into it now because I was I was about to jump into why the Rams will win, why the Pats will win. That's fine. You will get, go ahead. Let's just let's just we'll hash this out with do, some, some do, sense of order. Do we want to start with the Rams? Well, that's fine. You can. I, I did not do a a thing like that. I did some some comparisons of things that I think are important for what they've done in the playoffs. Okay. So you know how I look at these games. I think every year is a new year. I hate annual trends. I definitely hate decade long trends. Anything you tell me that the Patriots might have done or had done to them in 2003, I don't care about. Yeah. None of those players other than Tom are still there, and none of those coaches are other than Bill are still there. Well, like now, it's, it's now, just not it, – it doesn't matter. Something it's, it's that does fiction. matter Something that does matter is, what, there's 46 Patriots players that have played in Super Bowls? In Super Bowls, but not – any time you're talking about – They've made this run and they've been nine in a row or nine nine in, in seventeen, eighteen years. No, obviously. Any not of those all the first couple first couple first five, none of none of those stats matter. Oh agree. I mean none of those stats matter at all. So so I just don't like those types of trends. What I did was I looked at this season. I looked at right now what happened in the two playoff games that we've got. Because I think those are the two games where everybody for the Patriots were giving maximum effort. And everything was on the line. Well, and, and the same thing with the Rams, really. Oh, like, and, oh no, no, not just them. That's right. Well, and I did the same, Sue, like, did the same did nothing thing all right. season, and then I, once you get into the playoffs. I did the same different. thing with the Rams as well, and, uh, and and so that's what I tried to kind of use to look at to look at this, um, and uh, and and but I didn't do a this is why this team will win. This is why that team will win. Kind of okay. Thing. So go ahead. Get, let's go through your list, and we'll see how we can talk about it. All right. I'm going to bet you covered most of the things that I have. Um, and I, I didn't put as much, you know, stats in here. That's okay. But um, I got some of that. So. I do have some stats, but, but I know that you've got yeah. numbers here. Uh, reason number one why the Rams will win. Aaron Donald and Adamican Sue. The Rams have the NFL's third highest pressure rate this season. I know that Tom Brady has not been really – I think he's been touched once in two playoff games. Um but Six, nobody, times, ne- down one time. neither of those teams has had the inside pressure the same way that Aaron Donald can do it, right? So Joey Bosa or Bosa and uh, Melvin Gordon, um, that's okay. It, how, why do you got two Melvins well, on the same team? When you draft studs, they just happen to have the same name. I'll draft, same I'll draft all Melvins if they're that good because <laughs> those two guys are freaks. Melvin Ingram, yeah, I got, you. I got that you. right. Okay. I'm with you. Um, they they are outside rushers. Yes, right. They're edge the guys. Chiefs. They're technically called linebackers, even though they're yeah. not D. Ford, okay. same thing. And I it, forget the one play that he's known for with the you know the offsides or whatever. Couldn't but he, they did the same thing in the Pro Bowl. Oh, I know. well, he got back on sides for that one. But it doesn't matter. Like, but it, either way, it doesn't matter. But D. Ford was number six in the league with sacks this year. So now he didn't get close to what Aaron Donald's got. But he is also an edge rusher. Aaron Donald hits everything from. Straight up the gut. Up the they're, gut. They are, which is they are defensive weakness. tackles. All right. So, so I actually want to elaborate on that and expound on it a little bit. Because, That's kind of what I was planning on. Because that is the one thing I wrote down players that scare me. For the Rams, I have two. Aaron Donald and Adam Zoo. Out of all the teammates, all the players that the Rams are going to bring, I just watched this Patriots team shut down for an entire half the most explosive offense I have seen since Peyton Manning went wild when he got to, to Denver, okay? They blanked them, goose-egged them for the entire first half. There is The Rams might score 30, 40, and win this game. There is nobody on the Rams' offense that scared me. 
The Patriots, one weakness, Tom's one weakness has statistically always been if you can get to him rushing four, then you can play man, everybody else back, to deep safety. And, and that is the prototypical way to draw up a defense and beat Tom Brady. And those are the two guys to do it. Um, so thinking about this, I heard a couple of weeks ago Kevin Clark and uh, Robert Mays talking about this. This was even before the Chargers game. Um, it's, it's like speaking truth to something. There's an old story about Peyton Manning and you can't blitz him. You have, to, you have to attack him with four. And the same thing is said about Tom. You have to attack him with four down linemen because if you blitz them, they will murder you. And so there was a time where John Gruden famously had Peyton Manning backed up, and it was like third and 18 from his own, like, you know, nine-yard line or something. And he blitzed the house, and Peyton threw a dime that just dusted everybody for a touchdown. And Peyton went by the sidelines to John's like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? And then for a decade, nobody blitzed Peyton Manning. Yep. And so one play. Is, it, is it the chicken and the egg thing? Do you speak truth to something that, that, that might be real, might be not? If you blitz them, they're going to torch you. So, therefore, they go a decade and never get blitzed. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things where is it better to blitz them every couple of games, take a chance at getting torched, but if you get to them, you, you just made a big play and you maybe changed the game. Tom has had this exact same luxury. Teams cannot blitz him and or are afraid to blitz him because when they do, he picks them apart. He just surgically just removes everything. He finds all the weaknesses in all their defenses so quickly, um, gets the ball out, and, and, and it's just what he's always done so he doesn't face a lot of blitzes. I don't think they're going to have to blitz to get him. Now, being the Pats homer I am and the biased person that I am, I still think he's going to get the ball out. I think they're going to devise an offense to get it out quickly. But if they can't, that is where the danger is going to be. But it's not just rushing a blitzing Tom and, and stopping him with four. Those two guys scare me because the Patriots have ran the ball up the gut, up the middle on both the teams that they've played to control time of possession, yep. keep the other offenses on the sidelines all game long, and they've done it by running it up the middle. You're just not going to run it down in Dominic and Sue and Aaron Donald's throat. No. They're going to have to find a way to run it off the edge. I'm not a football genius. I don't draw up plays for a living. But if they want to be hard-headed and say, we're going to win this game in the trenches on offense, you're not. Yeah, because it'll there's be no, tough to do. There's nobody in the league that can block those two guys. Those are the only two players that scare me for the Rams. Pick or uh, uh, reason number two. On any of the rest of them. Oh, it's all good. You, reason you number two. You hit the one thing that, that I had notes on. But it's because it's the, the biggest it's, thing. It's the thing. Uh, pick number two for why the Rams will win. Brandon Cook's revenge game. Okay. Uh, yards per target with Tom Brady, 9.49. Yards per target with Drew Brees, 9.01. Yards per target with Jared Goff, 10.29. It has to be a whole yard over. Right? Yeah. It's, it is – Pretty far up there. Cooks can still fly. He can catch. He's a playmaker. And and I think that Cooks, had he stayed in the Patriots system longer, would be the go-to guy right now. Probably. Um, but he, he was only there for a year. They traded him to the Rams for – First round pick. First Sony round pick. Michelle. Roughly, they traded him for Sony Michelle. He was a one-year rental. They weren't going to pay him. Yeah. So they got Sony Michelle, who they got now for five years for cheap, thanks to Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks. Yeah. So, but Cooks, apparently there is a little bit of bad blood because oh, he, yeah. wanted, I mean, he, he wanted to play for the Patriots. He wanted to be a Patriot. He wanted to keep winning Super Bowls. He didn't get to win a Super Bowl. He, he, he yeah. was there one of the, the ones they lost. Uh, number three, Atlanta is where the Rams franchise got their last Super Bowl win, 23-16 to 16 over the Titans. You can see I was stretching for things here, right? It's all right. Uh, number four, the game is indoors. Okay. Fast you talked, track. You talked about this last week. Yeah. yeah. Indoors, how, how fast indoors track. The Rams. Uh, and it, and it kind of did. It, it, yeah. No, 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 um, but against New Orleans, it was a little bit more even, so I guess. Uh, but the, I do think the Rams are more talented than the Patriots. Oh, no no question. So, not, you're not going to hear that argument against me. All right. Number five, I've only got six of them. Number five, Wade Phillips' defenses have stymied Tom Brady in the past. Uh, he coached the Broncos' defense. 
that last kept the Pats out of the Super Bowl. That was four years ago. Best defenses I've ever seen in my life. And and this defense has the potential to be that good. They got two guys that scare me. I know. You've already talked about it. I know. And those two guys scared the hell out of me. They got two they, guys. They had, to, they had to go and get old defensive backs, and, and the linebackers aren't really anything to write home about. I said this last week when we were talking about the Saints-Rams game. When the hell did Akeem Tlaib become like Nande Afsamwa in his prime? Like, when did he become Revis Island in his prime? Well, I think just because of the numbers that have, that have happened this year. Like, obviously, he's not that. I just don't but, know why he scares people. It, well, it's because when he's in the game. I mean, he'll fight you. He's a scary dude. Yeah, but, but like, when he's in the game, the, the Rams' defense is significantly better than they are when he's off the field. Okay. And that's – there's no rhyme or reason to it other than, like, he is, he is really good at playing his position. Right, he's not, he's not scary as he's a, far he's as a, a very good part, pro, but like, and he's somebody that that brings value to your team. He was being talked about last week, like he's a lockdown cover corner that is going to shut down the one of the top two or three best receivers in the game, and it, and he might stop him on a couple of, th- but he didn't even cover him. Like yeah, he he, he, he wasn't even on my. They double team Michael, which is smart. It's what I would have done. You don't use your best guy on Michael Thomas. You double team Michael Thomas, and then you use your best guy on the second best dude because the second best dude is a ham sandwich. Yeah, he's he's nothing compared to Michael Thomas. Agree. And, and that's and that's what they did, and it worked, and it was smart because Michael Thomas did nothing in that game. Um, so it, it worked. I just don't know why he's so scary. Finally, number six, New England's defense has yet to make a stop in the red zone in the playoffs. I love this six stat. red zone trips, six touchdowns. Two games, two games in which they dominated the entire game until the fourth quarter. Massive leads, and they've only had six red zone drives against them. It's pretty crazy. So the fact that they, yeah, they've given up touchdowns on all six, that's not good. But they've only had six in two games. In two games. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty strong. That's, I'll take I'll take that stat all day long. Gave up what twenty eight points and thirty one points. It was twenty eight and thirty one. The twenty eight points they were up thirty five to seven at the half. Thirty five to seven. And then in they, the so Chiefs game, twenty eight points to make it what thirty one. In the Chiefs game, they were no, they gave up twenty four points in the fourth quarter. That's it. And, the and Chiefs, almost lost and, the game. Yes, in the fourth quarter they gave up thirty one points. And so, which is why we've got a prop bet that. That you might want to look at. That's so, but we'll get into that in the props segment. So we're we're going to do a different video for the props. Uh, here is why the Pats will win, and then uh, after this, I guess uh, you and I will go over some numbers. I'll just go over just a few numbers. We'll I, won't, I won't make it too boring or too long. Um, and then we'll give our picks. Why the Pats will win? The playoffs have been a different season from the regular season. Completely different. Uh, if you the Pats want to make up for last season, this is revenge tour, basically, right? Correct. I mean, this is like, okay, we lost to the Eagles last year. Maybe we didn't take that one as seriously as we should have. We coming for it this year. That's right. Um, number two, Rams cornerback Marcus Peters. Now, he's a pro. He is a pro. But he has also given up 883 yards. That's the second most in the NFL. And six touchdowns. That is the seventh most in the NFL. That is, that's some bad numbers. He's he's been torched for for a guy that has made Pro Bowls. He's been you know? torched. Um, it's it's just what happens to aging cornerbacks. Yeah, that cliff falls off fast. Yes, because you have to be so fast and so athletic. There is not an amount of money in the world that if I had elite athletic ability, where I would say. I think I'm going to play defensive back. Like, like I'm going to play soccer, I'm going to play baseball, I'm going to play basketball, or I'm going to pick any other position and try to be great at it. But there's just, that's just one that it's so hard to stay good for so long. When he's, I mean, he's a starter on this defense, but there is a reason why the Chiefs were okay with letting him go. Oh, no. And, yeah, not afraid I mean, the Chiefs, you, y'all have seen that defense. Yeah. And they're not good, but they're not going to pay him. To, to, to still be bad. Yeah. yeah. He, he doesn't, doesn't make the Chiefs better. better. So, so why pay him the money that he was asking for? Jared Goff, number three. Jared Goff against zone defenses? 
70%, 8.47 yards per attempt, 4.8% touchdown rate against top 12 man defenses, which is what the Patriots run. 53% completion rate, 6.86 yards per attempt. That's about two yards less or a yard and a half, whatever. 4.2% touchdown rate. Uh, and that was mainly against Denver, Green Bay, Detroit, and Chicago. Against Chicago, zero touchdowns, four picks. Against Detroit, zero touchdowns, two picks. Against Green Bay, one touchdown, one pick. And against Denver, I believe it was zero touch. Oh no, one touchdown and two picks. So in 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 that style of defense, playing him, two of those teams play real big boy defense. That's the Bears and the Broncos. They they, they are legit. Well, in, in Detroit is De- Detroit and Green Bay are average to right below average. But Detroit runs the same kind of thing that no. New I know that, but but what I'm saying is, is it's not like he was playing elite level talent. The Bears, I don't care what kind of defense they run, they're this year they were going to shut people down. Oh yeah, they they were just better than everybody else, talent on the field, at all three levels of defense. Green Bay and the Lions don't have that, which means he can be schemed out of games. He can be schemed out of his comfort zone. Um, if I had to pick one offensive player. That scared me for the Rams. It's not Gurley. It's not Golf. It's not Cooks. Because I think the Patriots are going to lock Cooks down. Listen, they made Tyreek Hill disappear last week. Oh, yeah. Or two weeks ago. Is it Robert Woods? I, 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 I think it's Robert Woods. Oh, I agree because he does everything. I think because where, where they got roasted in every game they got beat, they got beat by guys that had lateral speed that could move left and right, not north and south. And when he does the, the sweeps off the end – off the edges, I think that's going to be their best offensive weapon all game long. Is getting him the ball in open field and letting him go left and right to shake free and then use his speed to get the yards. The So there was, speaking of back on to Jared Goff, it's kind of the same thing. Um, there was a, and I forget what show this was, somebody was talking about what they would do to try and confuse Tom Brady. Because if you give him the same looks over and over, he's going to figure you out quickly. Yeah, it, it, yeah second quarter is going to so, murder. Them. So they said that they would, for Tom Brady, change up the defensive scheme every quarter. Oh, just just yeah. change it every time. I think you could do the same thing with Goff. I think it would work better against Goff. Yeah, oh, no doubt. The reason teams don't do that is because it's really hard to do and they don't have that many different schemes in their pocket. And eventually, one of those schemes that you're going to have to rotate in there is a zone because there's only so many ways you can design man to look. And as soon as you go to zone, it's over. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's just going to, he's going to score well, on every drive that quarter. The biggest that thing with this is, like, yes, Goff has to see the field, but Goff is really, in the entire playoffs, the most reliant on his coach oh, telling no, him what no is going question. on right before the play. No, so no question. If, if you can find a way to trick McVay, then, then you're gold. Or just make the adjustment after the 22-second mark. Yeah. Because if you stay in the offense and you know that McVay is staying in his ear all the way through and you see 22 seconds have tipped off the time clock, then you make your shifts, now, you're, now you've got golf where you want him. Well, that's, that's another reason that I've got here, McVay. Okay. McVay's offense is pretty predictable. Like, I know that that sounds crazy, but if you go back and look at what they run, like they're – they run a lot of different sets out of the same what, yes. uh, formation. They run the same formation over and over again. What they're good at is they motion. They, they run the same play seven different ways. Yeah. And so they try to confuse you before the ball is ever snapped. But there are ways to – I think I think Bill is going to be able to figure that out. That's what yeah. – That's what they. So, we'll just, all right, so let me get some of these numbers. Jared well, here, hold on. Let me get, oh, let me get the last two. Go ahead. Rams gave up 122.3 yards rushing during the season. Sony Michelle has 242 yards and five touchdowns in two playoff games. So while we talk about you're just not going to be able to, to bully Aaron Donald and Ndamukong Sue. Still run outside on them. Run outside, but I also think that these two guys are so focused on the pass rush. Oh, right. that they do that, they're stupid. That – You'll be able to run in between the tackles some. Tom only has two touchdowns in the whole playoffs right now. He's got yeah. one one per each game. That's it. He's not cutting these people up and scoring touchdowns. 
which, which means he's dinking and dunking, and when they get in close, they just rush the football in. If you think that he's just going to sit there and let you come sack him, if you're just worried about him, he will absolutely step back, fake the, fake the throw, and then just hand it right off and let him just run right by you. Yeah. That, that's going to happen. Or, you know, that little screen pass that they do where they just get right behind the, the block and then just dump it right over them. Um, that'll happen. The last one. Go ahead. Finish, last finish the last one, then I'll get on. Every year that Saban and Belichick have both made the playoffs yeah, slash national championship game, when one wins, the other, the other loses. When Saban loses the national championship or doesn't win the national championship, the Patriots win. The Patriots win a Super Bowl. It still continues today. That one, that one. I said that the yeah. I said that the day after the. I was. And that's when the Patriots were like three percent to win it all. Yeah. Like they, no one, everyone thought they would lose week one against the Chargers. Um. So I, I love that. So let me let me get into some of these numbers real quick, and then I'll, I'll go quickly because I don't want to bore people. Jared Goff's completion percentage in the playoffs right now. It's like 58.8%. So we'll, we'll give him 59. Okay. 59% in the, in the playoffs. He had, I thought he had a great game against the Saints. I thought he had a great game. But his first quarter was so bad, it makes all his numbers look bad. And then he only had one touchdown. Like, it, it's not like he did just unworldly incredible. Tom, 71%, and that's rounded down for him. It was like 71.111 or something like that. 692 yards. He's only got two touchdowns. But he's just – he's using his passing game to, to – it's just their running game. It's we're going to hand it off and get five yards or I'm going to throw it and get five yards. But you're not stopping us. Third down completions. Here's what we've got. First – sorry, the number of first downs the Rams have. Both playoff games. they got 49. they got 19 in one, 30 in the other. Okay? The Patriots have 36 and 30. 66 first downs. This is how they are going, to, and this is exactly what they did to the first two teams that were better than them offensively. Yeah. No keep one, them off the field. No one, you just keep them on sidelines. You, just, you, just, you sit over there, and you just get mad, and you get angry. And then when you finally get the ball, there's, so much, playing so frustrated. There's, there's so much frustration that I've just sat here for nine minutes while you took all the clock in the first quarter up, and, and you drove the ball just systematically down the field, punched it in for a touchdown, and now I got to score fast, and 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 the Patriots have you right where they want you. Then that defense is not a great defense, but they have shut out these unbelievable offense. Some of the two of the highest scoring teams in the league this year were the Chargers and the Chiefs. In the first half, they did nothing. Yeah. And their lead was so nice that the second half, yes, they play a prevent. They let you come back. It got real scary in the Chiefs game. They couldn't stop them at all. The guys were just completely gassed. But at the end of the day. It, it, it didn't, didn't matter. What, what, what you could not do in the first half was so able to, to, to put you out of your game plan. It, it just makes it to where it's scary. Rushing. So the Rams have outrushed the Patriots in their two games. 350 yards, four TDs, but they got two fumbles. The Patriots, just A, they just don't fumble. That's just, that's just something they don't do. Well, not, not in the playoffs anyway. I don't, I don't know if they fumble a lot. They, they don't fumble a lot anyway. But um, yeah. if, if you fumble, you just don't touch the ball for a billion. Well, you go to the clause. Four billion different running backs that's back why, there. That's why. They only got 331 yards, but so much of their offense is in the short passing game, two receivers. They got eight touchdowns, though. When they get into the red zone, they're scoring, and, and they are – they're handing it off to the running backs. They're ticking the clock off. I told you last week when we did the, the recap, we finally did the recap on the Chiefs game. Uh, and, and I said, I think if Bill was upset about anything, it was in the fourth quarter, game ticking down. There's like 39 seconds left. The Patriots have to get a touchdown because they're down by four. Right. And they hand it off to, uh, to, to, Burkhead. to Burkhead. And I was like, there's no doubt in my mind Bill was like, don't score on first down. Like, I know we got to hit a touchdown, but don't score on first down. Like, just just lay down the one-yard line. And then, and, just, and then we'll score. And then we'll let it tick all the way down, and Tom will do his little – because they had three timeouts, so get a you know, stop the clock. Just let it go all the way down. Tom does a little sneak. Tom does a little sneak. Tom does a little sneak. We can get that one inch. And and I think I think he would have much rather that than take your chances at going in overtime. Um, eight rushing touchdowns, pretty incredible. Rushes against. 
This is this is crazy. Both of these teams are scary. In two playoff games, the Rams have only given up 98 yards, three TDs on the ground. Now you and I, and I'm only giving you rushing stats for the most part because you and I firmly believe in all the football. It doesn't matter if it's Pee Wee, whatever. If you run the ball and stop the run, yep. that's how you can win championships. You can do all these things and win the regular season and look really pretty. But you have to, you you have to control the line. Go ask the Chiefs if they would much rather be able to run the ball the way, and not score 50 yards. That shirt is for sale over, over at our store at winningcureseverything.com. So go there, go click the store, run the ball, stop the run. It's a good shirt. I like it. That's right. It is a great-looking shirt. Gary's brother designed it for us, and it's, and it's incredible. Um 98 yards in two games. That's an incredible, just just a crazy number to me. Pats. That that actually to me is a little bit more impressive than the Pats. It would, go on and, and give the Pats numbers. Pats number is 60 yards in two games and two touchdowns. Wait, now here's what's crazy about it is it, the Rams one. They were actually behind against the Saints. Yeah, but they were only behind 13. I, agreed, but but like it's not like they were behind a lot. Right, but what I'm saying is they were behind, so the other team should have been able to run the football. But they were able to stop the run that well. That other, that other team just doesn't run the football. With, with the Pats, yes. it, the other team's never had a chance no, to run the ball. That's right. They just don't. The, the Chiefs just don't run the football very much at all. Well, the, and, and they had been with Damian Williams, like against the Colts well, they did against and whatever. The Colts, but yeah, and, and even later in the year with Damian Williams, he was a better uh, just all-purpose back. That's right. Than Kareem Hunt was. Hunt was like a big play threat, Dynamic. but Williams really performed better than Hunt did down the stretch. I thought so. Um, I thought it was more complete. I'm with you. But but they never had a, a chance to even run the ball because it, it had to be Mahomes throwing the football all they the got time. Down too fast, and then the Chargers. The Chargers were down 35 to seven at the half. They had no they had no chance. Melvin no Gordon chance. got completely taken out of the game, and he did nothing wrong. Yeah. Just 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 you can't play today because we are down. Those are the things that stand out to me in this. Um, I'm going to make my pick. It's no, no, no secret whatsoever. Here's the thing that scares me the most. You know how I feel about the 80, 90 percent thing. When 80 percent of the action all goes one way, it does scare me. Vegas builds these big buildings and in, in nice, you know, pretty lights and. and has how about all the this? Go, go with your total first. I have no idea what the total. I, I would probably go under if I had to. It's 56 and a half. I think it's going to go under. I, when we get into the props. You'll, you'll, you'll kind of see a lot more of how I think this game is going to be played. What scares me – I'm going with the Patriots. I'm going with the Patriots. What scares me the most about this game is I cannot, I cannot see a way that the Patriots lose. And I felt that way last year. There's, there was nothing mathematical that could have happened. There's nothing logical that could have shown me that the Eagles are a better team than the Patriots. Well, and, and but last year was, was Nick Foles' magic. I get it. I get it. And, and right. I'm, not, I'm not saying that's going to happen again this year. I don't think that But that usually Jared when I feel this confident, it's something that kind of scares me. I think here's what I want. This is all I want in my life. And it's all I want. And I'm not going to ask for it next year. I've asked for it every year that they made it to the playoffs. They made it to the Super Bowl. All I want is one time. One time I want to watch my team in a Super Bowl. Now, I've gotten to watch them win five times. I know I feel like an idiot even trying to ask for any. Extra. Anything more. Yeah. But one time, I just want to enjoy it. I want to watch them kick their ass. I want to watch them. I want a Seahawks Broncos. I want a Tampa Bay Raiders game. I want a game where we just come out and we beat the hell out of them from top to bottom. I don't care about the TV ratings. I don't care about all the casual fans that tune in. And by halftime, after, you know, uh, uh, Maroon 5 is over with, they, they don't come back. I don't care. I just want one time to not nearly have a heart attack. I don't want to need Malcolm Butler at the very end of the game and me sitting there crying at my house. I don't want to freak out wanting to blow my brains out in the Atlanta game, just watching the Falcons murder my team, and then them clawing with their fingernails to come back, and then just elation like I could never explain. I've been there. I've experienced all of those things. And over, while the, and over and over and over again. That's right, five times. And while the ending was amazing, I, I'm i okay with just I just one time I want to know by the second – by the time we kick off at halftime, this game is just over. That's, that's all I want. And, and you, you kind of thought that against the Chiefs I, last week. You know, it was only 14 well, nothing. Four, no, when I knew it was 14 nothing, I, we, we needed one more score for me to feel that way. Definitely felt it with the Chargers. There was no question in my mind, yeah. this game's over with. Now I get to enjoy this one. 
And what's sad is I felt that way against the Eagles last year. I thought this is going to be the year we're going to beat their ass. And we did. Tom didn't punt the entire game. He broke every quarterback record for a Super Bowl. What was it, 505 yards? 500 yards, did not punt, and they lost. And it's just like, I, I don't know what we're supposed to do with that. Somehow people were going to claim that that hurt his legacy. I, all right, he scored 500 points in the game. I know he lost the game, but uh, yeah. what is he supposed to Oh, he had that one turnover. Oh, I'm sorry. He had one drive where he made a mistake. Oh, the other thing that uh, that I didn't write down, the uh, Pats are 16-1 and one against teams that they have seen for the first time that season in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, when the team doesn't have a chance to see them first. Yeah. Um, I, I, but, I, knew, but, I knew that stat. I'd forgotten But that, that one loss was the Eagles, Eagles last year. Last year. I know. I know. So – uh, I I will probably go under the fifty six and a half because I mean twenty eight twenty four gets you there, right? Like I feel like it's going to be that kind of a game. There there is a part of me that thinks we're going to see the first two halves and the first two playoff games that they played. They played against two really good offenses. The Rams are a very good offense. They held them to almost nothing. I I think Early, all of. All, yes, that's, that's, that's when, when we get to the props, I'm, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. All of the Rams' first half and first quarters, I'm just going under. I'm just yeah. telling you, just take all the unders for the, for the Rams' team and, and for the, for the Rams. That's just, just, that's just it. I don't think the Rams are going to score much in the first half. Now, McVay is a smart man. He can easily come out, do a lot of adjustments. Patriots still lose this game. It almost happened with the Chiefs. It, it, it doesn't mean that it's going to be the blowout that I want, but I just think early on the Patriots will have a quick advantage. I am also taking the Patriots. And the under? Yep, and the under. Uh, oh, this is what Pat means. Every time you and I pick the same, we lose. Well, it, but here's the reason why I'm taking this. I've bet against the Pats the last two, two games, and, and I've bet against them several times during the year. Now, during the year, that worked out okay. But this go round, like I, it, I, I feel like maybe this is why there's so many bets coming in, because people are just tired of getting beat by these guys. That's it. They they are putting their money because they've bet against them so many times. Well, they bet the last two weeks. Overwhelmingly, the the majority of the action nationwide was on the Chargers, and, on the and overwhelmingly on the Chiefs. This is why the people that are saying. The, the Patriots, Patriots are talking like they're, they're underdogs, and, and everybody's, everybody's counting them out. out. Everybody did, did count them out the last two weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. You absolutely did. You can't say, well, they're, they're the Patriots, Patriots, they're the heavy favorites, favorites. and then go on to in your very next bets. Oh, well, I'm, I'm picking the Chargers to win the game. Hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute. You, you just, that doesn't make any sense. You can't do that and then get mad that people are saying, nobody believes that we can win. You, you keep picking against them. Yeah. That's true. It's true. Anyway, I've bet against the Pats a lot in the Super Bowls. Uh, not this time. You've probably done decent, though. No, I've, I've done really well. Other they've than been the favored by a lot. Yeah, they've been favored. Usually they don't cover because they just are too big of numbers, and the games are always crazy tight. Um, I have not done well with the Pats in the Super Bowls, just because they haven't covered nearly as many as But But this one, only two and a half. You went on a field goal. I, I trust Guskowski. Did great those early years. Adam and Terry, pretty oh, yeah. money because they were always dogs. Oh yeah, nobody believed in Tom. Uh, early, early on. Yeah. Well, yeah, the first three, nobody um, believed in Tom. Well, it, but no, the first, uh, the first two, nobody believed in Tom. No, the third one, they were seven point favorites over the Panthers. Panthers, they didn't cover that one. They did not cover that because they only won by field goal. But either way, their third Super Bowl in four years. All right, so we both got Pats minus two and a half and. We're not going to bet the total, but we would probably take the under. I would take the under. I'm not going to play it. I like that. I, I like haven't that. played the total yet. I'm not a, I just don't have a feel for how these games go over or under. Last week, I picked both of them right. I, I was wrong in how they got there. Uh, almost got both scores perfectly right last week. Yeah, you, you were real close on that. Real close. All right, uh, so that wraps up the Super Bowl preview. We have given you all the information you need to be a winner. So go down to Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. Put your bets in at any of their six incredible sports books. You can find more information at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us at winningcureseverything.com. We'll see you guys on the, the props pick. Whatever. <laughs>